In the headlines, police declare Britain Nigerian wanted for attempting to overthrow Tenubu. Gunmen kill policeman vigilante in Sokoto State. Ten maritime workers abducted along Borni Port Hackett Waterway. Away from Nigeria, Tunisia police arrest presidential candidate three removed from the race as pre-election tension rises. Good evening and welcome to the news update on Trust Television. I am Aisha Salihu. The news in detail and we'll begin with security update. The Nigeria Police Force has declared one Andrew Wine, also known as Andrew Povich or Drew Pove, a British national wanted for allegedly orchestrating a pilot, a plot, I beg your pardon, to overthrow the government of President Bola Tinubu. The force spokesperson, ACP Olumuywa Adejobi, disclosed this on Monday at the force headquarters in Abuja. The report. According to Adejobi, Wayne is accused of renting his space at Labour House in Abuja under the guise of operating an Iva Valley bookshop and establishing stars of nation schools to cover up his subversive activities. The police claimed that Wayne was involved in planning and financing the August protests, which were part of a broader conspiracy to destabilize the country and instigate an unconstitutional regime change. Adejobi further revealed that documentary evidence and conventions have linked Wayne to the violent protests, stating that he provided operational guidance and financial support to those involved. He mobilized and deployed several billions of Naira to his Nigerian collaborators, urging them to mobilize the public to violently storm police facilities and military barracks anticipating a bloodbath that will instigate international condemnation of the Nigerian government. These acts are in clear violation of the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011 and other relevant laws of this country. Since the commencement of investigations and when has fled the country, he and one of his local coordinators, one Loki, in his opinion, have accordingly been declared wanted and global hunting for them has commenced in connection with this investigation. The development follows the recent arrest of Polish nationals in Kano by the Department of State Services, DSS, during the protest. We were later released after being detained for weeks. The police have also summoned the president of the Nigerian Liberal Congress, Joe Ajero, regarding Wayne's activities. Also, Amnesty International has condemned the planned mass trial of hundreds of protesters arrested during the nationwide hunger and hardship protests. A statement by the country director of Amnesty International, Nigeria, Isa Sanusi, released on Monday, labeled the trials as an attempt to punish dissent and stifle critical voices. The protests were held between August 1 to 10, 2024. He described the charges as blatantly trumped up and demanded their immediate withdrawal. The organization called for an immediate end to what it described as endless bizarre attempts to deprive citizens of their right to peaceful protest. The rights group also urged the Nigerian government to release all those detained during the protest emphasizing that their right to peaceful assembly should be protected rather than criminalized. Similarly, Justice Emeka Nwite of the Federal High Court in Abuja has remanded 10 and bad governance protesters in prison. The judge on Monday remanded nine male protesters in the Kujie prison, while a female, a female protester was remanded in Suleja. The court also fixed September 11 for trial and ruling on bail application by the protesters. This followed the arraignment of the protesters who all pleaded not guilty on six counts of alleged treason, intent to destabilize Nigeria, conspiracy to commit felony and inciting to mutiny, which is an offense punishable under Section 97 of the Penal Code. A lawyer, Deji Adeanju, who appeared for three of the defendants, fought the treason charges against the defendants, insisting that 
they only participated in lawful and legitimate protests against hardship facing them. We just want to speak to one, one issue. Yeah, we just want to speak to one issue of uh, the, the, the learned senior advocate uh, for the prosecution, where he, he had already passed sentence and ruling on, uh, on some of the defendants. And this is wrong. This is media trial. And this is uh, media publicity. And um, for us, very simple. We are happy that finally protesters have been charged. Unfortunately, instead of charging them for protest, the Tinubu government has charged them for terrorism. What an irony of some sort. When Bilu, Tuji and other terrorists and bandits are in, in, uh, on TikTok having fun and abducting people in a, co in a country you know, in a country where, you know, we are battling insecurity, where we should be arraigning terrorists and bandits. Not even one terrorist in the last one year have been arraigned. The protesters have been arraigned. I don't know what they are afraid of. You know, so we are happy that they have been arraigned and um, we will not see any other thing that will be subjudice and we will leave the rest for the courts. More on security matters. Toronto police has arrested the Canadian-Nigerian woman who recently threatened to poison Yoruba and Benin citizens living in Canada. The Toronto Police Service disclosed this in a Sunday statement on its website titled Suspected Have Suspected Hate Motivated Threatening Investigation Woman Arrested. Amaka Stoneberger is scheduled to appear in court on September 2, 2024, after she was apprehended on Sunday following an investigation into online content she reportedly posted on August 25. Sternberger will face a judge at the Ontario Court of Justice. The case has been treated as a suspected hate-motivated offence, with the Toronto Police Hate Crime Unit involved in the investigation. According to the statement, TPS said hate-motivated crimes may involve consultation with the Crown, and if convicted, hate is considered an aggravating factor in sentencing. Gunmen have reportedly killed one policeman under vigilante during patrol in Sokoto State. It was learned that the incident occurred around 3 a.m. on Monday at Kwanan Melgoma along the Sokoto Bodinga Road. Although the spokesman of the Sokoto Police Command could not be reached at the time of filing this report, a senior police officer who spoke on condition of anonymity confirmed the attack. According to him, the operatives were caught unaware by the gunmen who came in a white hillox. He added that the bodies of the deceased were deposited at the mortuary of Usmanu Donfodio University Teaching Hospital. Still in Sokoto State, the military high command has debunked claims of the abduction of 150 persons by terrorists in Gober in Sokoto State. A statement signed by the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, said the incident of mass killing and burial depicted by terrorists in a trending video happened in a nearby African country and not Nigeria. General Buba, in the statement, explained that on the 29th of August 2024, at about 5 p.m., troops of Operation Hadar in Daji deployed at FOB Zurmi in Zurmi local government area of Zamfara State, embarked on fighting patrol to dislodge terror gathering at Kwashabawa village, adding that while attempting to outflank the terrorists during the fight, quantity two of troops MRAPS got bogged down due to the swampy terrain occasioned by the rains. The statement added that the troops dismounted and demobilized the MRAPS when efforts to, block, to backload them were futile. The sad demobilization of the MRAPS by troops, he said, was to prevent it from being useful to the terrorists after abandonment. He, however, urged Nigerians to be circumspect of the antics of the terrorists to propagate misinformation, disinformation and fake news as part of their war propaganda efforts. Still on security matters, gunmen suspected to be Boko Haram insurgents looted and set ablaze shops and houses in Mafa village in Tarmoa local government area of Yobe. 
The USA Police Command spokesman, DSP Dungus Abdul Karim, made this known in Damaturu on Monday. He said they are yet to ascertain the number of lives lost in the incident, which occurred at about 4 p.m. on Sunday in the remote village. Eyewitness said the terrorists armed with rifles and RPGs attacked Mafa Wood, one on more than 50 motorcycles and set ablaze many shops and houses. At least 10 maritime travelers have been reportedly abducted by sea pirates along the Boni Port Hackett waterway. Though details are still sketchy, reports say the incident, which occurred Monday morning, is believed to involve 10 persons traveling between Boni and Port Hackett. The district chairman, Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria River State District, Israel Peppel, who confirmed the incident, was quoted as saying, it is not a rumor, it is real. When contacted, the police public relations officer who confirmed the incident said the commissioner of police, Olatunji Disu, had mandated the deputy commissioner of police in charge of operations, DCP Olubenga Adekboju, and the DPOs in the area to make sure the victims regain their freedom as soon as possible. And in health, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors has directed its members to resume work on Monday following a seven-day nationwide warning strike and backed upon by its members over the abduction of their colleague Ganiat Pokmola. NARD began the seven-day warning strike last Monday to press for the rescue of Mokbola, a registrar in the Department of Ophthalmology at the National Eye Center, Kaduna State. NARD President Dele Abdullahi said it would review the federal government's commitment to resolving its demand in the next three weeks. Mokbola was kidnapped eight months ago. You're watching the news update on Trust Television. Still to come. How are speaking Chinese nationals call for enhanced bilateral cooperation? We'll bring you details of the story and more after the break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Let's have another look at some of our top stories. We told you that police declare Britain Nigerian wanted for attempting to overthrow President Tinubu. Gunmen kill policeman vigilante in Sokoto State. And to other stories. Ahead of the off-cycle governorship election scheduled to hold on the 21st September 2024 in Edo State, the state PDP Youth Alliance for Good Governance accused the opposition party of harassing some chieftains of the PDP and warned against any attempt to subvert the will of the people in the state. At a press briefing on Monday, the group also alleged that it has uncovered plans by the opposition to use the police to effect the mass arrest of key PDP members and also compromise INEC ahead of the poll, while calling on the president to take swift and decisive action to end what it called undemocratic behavior. The group reminded INEC and the police that the right to freedom of expression association and assembly is enshrined in the Nigerian constitution and must be upheld at all costs. Research reports have unveiled a sinister plot aimed at undermining the opposition in Edo State through a series of mass arrests and arbitrary detentions. We have received credible information that the Nigerian police, under pressure from certain quarters, is being recognized to target and intimidate key opposition figures already Individuals like Mr. Amos Tom and Kingsley Osaho have been unjustly detained, while others, including Odion Olaye, Chief Francis Inebiki, Chief Olukaga, Festus Osaibovo, and Kelly Inedebo, are reportedly on the brink of similar fates. This wave of political repression is not only a gross violation of the rights of these individuals but also a blatant attempt to silence dissent and instill fear among the electorates. We categorically reject these tactics and demand an immediate cessation of all acts of intimidation and harassment. 
we call upon President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to take swift and decisive action to put an end to this undemocratic behavior. The planned mass arrest and detention, if allowed to proceed, will plunge Edo State into crisis of confidence in the electoral process. We demand that those already detained be immediately released or charged with recognizable offenses in line with the law of the land. We call on the resilient and courageous people of Edo State to stand firm in the face of these challenges. Your vote is your choice, and you must not allow anyone to silence it. The Joint Committee on Electoral Matters has proposed a slash in the salaries of legislators and executive members by 30 and 40 percent, respectively. This was proposed on Monday during an interactive session with judiciary and political parties led by the chairman, Senate Committee on Electoral Matters, Sharaf Adin Ali, on the National Assembly Review and Amendment of the Electoral Act 2022. According to them, the salaries of legislators should be reduced by 30%, while that of the executives be reduced by 40% to cut costs. During the session, political parties also propose that all elections, presidential, national, assembly, governorship and state houses of assembly be conducted in a single day, asserting that the current staggered system of elections is not cost effective. They also propose the continuous voter registration link to the national identity number for added security and to save costs during the voter's registration. Among the 35 proposals presented by the IPAC chairman during the three-day retreat, the registered political parties also maintain that the appointment of the Independent National Electoral Commission chairman should no longer be the responsibility of the executive, rather it should be advertised to interested parties. For centuries, trade relations between Nigeria and China has continued to foster unity among citizens of these two nations. Today, many Chinese can speak Hausa language fluently to the extent the to extend the relationship beyond trade to intercultural. Trustee's correspondent Idris Jabrin met with Kande and Murtala, Chinese Hausa speaking people, and filed in this report. Hearing the names Kande and Murtala, one may assume they are some local Hausa speaking people from a remote village in northern Nigerian state of Kano. They are not even among the seven illegitimate houses. But here are two Chinese nationals who speak Hausa as if they are the descendants of the great Bayajita. <laughs> Murtala Chang and Kande Goa are in Kano to meet with their fans as part of their efforts to promote Chinese Nigeria bilingual relations. To Today, Murtala and I are in Kano to meet with our fans and followers on social media. We are here to foster better relationship between our cultures and tradition and have better relations. We are basically here to have a face-to-face -face meeting with our fans. Although there is a huge gap between China and Nigeria, especially in terms of distance, there are however close business ties between both countries. There are several investments from China in Nigeria. Prior to my coming to Nigeria, I had never heard of the Hausa language, even though I had information about Nigeria and Africa. For some Nigerians, the relationship between Nigeria and China is of significant importance, considering the long years of economic activities between the two nations. <music> Student from Chinese Bilingual College, Madubi, demonstrated the fact that Nigerians can also speak Chinese language if given the conducive environment for learning. The meeting between the two Chinese Hausa speaking people was attended by celebrities from Kaniwood and social media influencers across Kano State. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kano. In business, 
The rising inflation rate will force Nigerian households to spend the largest amounts of their earnings on food in the next six months. A recent survey by the Central Bank of Nigeria has shown this is as the most recent report by the National Bureau of Statistics puts the inflation rate at 33.40 percent and food inflation over 40 percent. According to the CBN report, the poll was conducted from July 22 to 26, 2024, with a response rate of 99.7 percent, with each sample size drawn from the NBS master sample list of 1,665 households in the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. In the report, titled Household Expectation Survey, published on its website, the CBN said, Many Nigerians intend to cut down on items that are not essential for now in the next three and six months. They, however, plan to spend 54.9% of their income on food items in the next six months. On the flip side, the respondents did not plan to spend a substantial amount of income on big-ticket items such as the purchase of a house, car and household appliances. Also, Nigerians do not intend to spend on investment such as acquiring landed properties or other forms of investments. They equally do not plan on saving their incomes. And to developments away from Nigeria, Tunisia's Electoral Commission has approved just three candidates to run in next month's presidential election, ignoring a court ruling to reinstate three others. Among those approved are President Kai Saeed and Ayachi Zamel, whose campaign team had earlier said had been arrested on Monday. The president faces accusations of trying to restrict the number of those allowed to run against him. Since he won his first term in 2019, Saeed has suspended parliament and concentrated power in his hands. Last week, the country's highest court said three candidates who had been barred from running by the Electoral Commission should be allowed to participate. Farouk Bouaska, the head of the commission, had said he would look at the court's ruling before making a decision. In a statement quoted by AFP News Agency, the commission said the court had not officially communicated its ruling within the deadline. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update on Trust Television. Do not forget, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentary. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for watching.